On this episode of History Hunters, we'll explore some of the historic aspects of a quaint little town in California's Motherlode country. Once rich with gold and now rich with gold rush history, this village was the place where the legendary bandit Black Bart faced trial for his final robbery of a stagecoach. So welcome to this episode of History Hunters. I'm in San Andreas, California. It's the county seat of Calaveras County. It dates back to 1848 when this area was deluged by people hunting for gold. This was settled by Mexican miners that came up from Mexico and they established a camp here. And it's said that on November 30th, 1848, they were celebrating St. Anthony and the Spanish version of St. Anthony is San Andreas. As a testimony to how old this place is, you'll see that this tree right here is growing almost out of the base of this building. Been cramped a little bit. Old brick everywhere. This is the main street of San Andreas, which is the oldest part of town. In fact, some of these buildings date back to 1850s. Perhaps your own grandfather or your great-grandfather walked these sidewalks and entered these buildings. On this street, Charles Bowles, otherwise known as Black Bart, was brought to a jail cell in the old courthouse. He was tried for robbery after leading authorities to the gold that he had right after his last robbery on Funk Hill near Copperopolis, not too far from here. On November 3rd, 1883, he was sentenced on this block to six years in San Quentin State Prison by Judge Charles Gottschalk. He was released from San Quentin on account of good behavior after spending four years behind bars. And then he disappeared into history, which is a great mystery today. It's also been said that legendary bandit Joaquin Marietta head out in this town, but I don't know how true that is. Plaque here says this is the first restaurant in town. On this site, Joseph Zwinge built the first restaurant tent here in 1853, known as the American Restaurant. After losing his business to three fires, he erected a permanent stone structure in 1855, and in 1857 a brick extension was added to enlarge the restaurant and a few guest rooms. This building survived the fires of 1856 and 1858. And look at this. It has a little ring to tie up your horse here. Let's read this plaque here. It says, erected in 1852. This building was used as a hotel for many years. In 1937, it was purchased and restored by Mr. and Mrs. Desiree Frico of Frico City, donated to the County of Calaveras to be used as a county library, museum, and chamber of commerce. Now, right across the street is the Winkler store, established in 1929. However, the building, covered by that stucco facade, was built in 1858 as the Cornell and Bowman store. It's historic in that it has tile dating back to the 1930s. Still here, mentioning how it was a dry goods store. And over here, the tile on the ground reads F.E. Winkler. The proprietor here has been dead for 72 years. There's the Calaveras Enterprise, or Calaveras Citizens Building, 1859. It was once a dry goods store. Newspaper in town. These old historic doors. Look at this, got a piece of the old marble slate on the front. It's been broken away. There's the 1856 Oddfellows Hall, now part of the museum. And the Hall of Records over here. It's now closed because of COVID. 1893. This is where Black Bart was actually sentenced. There's a courtroom in the back. This building was also used by Michael Landon for a courthouse scene in Little House on the Prairie back in the 1970s. Look at the big chunks of, I think they're either limestone or granite put in place over the threshold of this. 
over here is the Blackbart Inn. It's actually comprised of three different buildings built between 1856 and 1926. Three different buildings. Here. As you can see, they capitalize on the name of Black Bart around here. Now, not all the historical buildings in San Andreas have survived the decades. Down there on the corner of Main and Court Streets was the Metropolitan Hotel, which was built in 1859 was destroyed by fire, I understand, in 1926. Very historic Main Street. There's the famous Goonies Bar and Grill. Dates back to 1858. Property was originally purchased in 1858 for $800 following the fire in June of that year, which destroyed most of downtown San Andreas. One story brick building with basement was constructed and opened as a saloon. It served many purposes over the years, including operating as a harness shop, jewelry store, office, and restaurant. This is one of the first buildings that was built after the fire of 1858 and has been used almost exclusively as a saloon and restaurant. So right opposite the Highway 49 there is the Odd Fellows and Masonic Lodge. It was built in 1900 at a cost of $1,079. It's also the high school from 1905 to 1928. Let's take a look over here. There's a historical marker. San Andreas, heart of the southern mines, settled by Mexicans in 1848, named after Catholic Parish of St. Andrew. Whenever you go to the gold mining towns, you'll see these iron doors, which kind of kept out the thieves as well as fire. The threat of fire was very real in communities like this. Most of the buildings that were here that remain were built after the fires in the 1850s. Originally, they had built this town with wooden buildings, and of course, the fires just completely devastated towns such as this. Right now, we're going to head over to the People's Cemetery and try to find the grave of Judge Charles and Victor Gottschalk, the one that sentenced Black Bart to six years in San Quentin for committing the armed robberies of stagecoaches out of Funk Hill, not very far from here. And he also has a tragic ending. We'll tell you about it when we find his grave. So we're on the hillside, uh, People's Cemetery, San Andreas, uh, try to find the grave of Judge Gottschalk. It's going to be kind of a challenge because there's uh, a big cemetery here, and I had no idea that there were so many people here. However, I think we're starting out in the wrong place, starting out where the newer graves are in the 70s. So we're going to make our way over that way. Sarah joining me here. There's someone driving in here. I know, I saw that. How did they get in? I have no idea. I think the older section's over this way. Found a bunch of veterans graves here. William R. Barnes, Company F, 1st California Cavalry. J.T. Getchell, Company H, the 8th California Infantry. Uh, these are all California Infantries, it appears. Here we have a Sergeant Alva Parks, 1st Montana Infantry, Spanish-American War. This is kind of interesting. Here's a William Platts. He was Company B of the 9th Michigan Infantry. And if you look over here, you'll see that I think it was a redo on a mistake that they made on a previous marker. And they just flipped it over and did this one. Hey, huh. what did you just spot? Deer. He's going over that way. Eliza Osborne died 1868. Looks like she was 58. That's probably one of the older graves here. This grave here of William Sodomon, he had a very tragic ending. Let me tell you about it. William Sodomon was killed in December of 1873. It said he was killed in an argument over a diversion of water at Clear Springs Cottage Ranch near San Andreas. Looks like his marker's been cracked at one point. Sarah actually found the grave of Charles Gottschalk's 
and this gave it away right here. God shocks. That's Carlos Noriega. Yes. Anita. That's father-in-law. Anita Shin. That's Anita. And then. <clears throat> this just says C. CV. This is him. Got shot. So thanks to Sarah Sleuthing, she found the grave here of Judge Charles Victor Gottschalks, the one that sentenced Black Bart to state prison six months at San Quentin for committing the stagecoach robberies at Funk Hill in Calaveras County. The trial took place here in the courthouse that we just visited a little while ago. Charles Gottschalk married a much younger woman, a Mexican woman by the name of Charlotte Noriega. She was 29 years his junior and he was getting older he was losing his eyesight, and he was very depressed by the death of Victor Shin, which was his nephew. His wife's sister's son actually died young. It says he was just completely devastated by the death. Say so he was dealing with the death of his favorite nephew. He was dealing with his failing eyesight. He was dealing with his infirmities at his old age, and he decided that he was gonna take his life. On the morning of March 2nd, 1905, he went to the office that he had here in San Andreas. He wrote a letter to his wife and he wrote a letter, a couple of letters to his friends. We were told that his wife knew he was suicidal, so she hid his gun, but somehow he found it. He took it to work with him that day and he put a 38 caliber bullet into his head to end his life. So he was born July 1st, 1827. He died March 2nd, 1905. And underneath it, you will see the name of Victor Jay Shen, that was his nephew. Judge Gottschalk was born in New Orleans and he came to California in the late 1840s. I understand landing first in Placerville where he was a butcher and he became a bookkeeper. He was elected Superior Court Judge in Calaveras County in 1879 and he served in that position for 25 years. Over here is the grave of Charlotte Noriega Gottschalks. She passed away a little bit later, 1927. Carlos Noriega was born in 1824 in Mexico and he died here in 1884. He was the father of Charlotte Noriega as well as Anita. She was born in 1858 and she died in 1896. What did you find here? This is Tom Bright, Sarah, Mally, W.M. Bright, and then another Sarah, Sarah Bright. Okay, yeah. These are people we definitely need to talk about. Oh yeah, why we need to talk about Well, because William was a homicide victim and Sarah was his, had died before, that was his wife. She died before him, a couple years before him. This is erected to the memory of Sarah, wife of William Bright, native of Scotland, who died on, looks like Content Hill, November. Contract, this is an AT, right? Or is that an N? Is that November 27th, 1858? She was 31. Now right here is the grave of William Bright. He was killed on the trail walking home from his mine. The suspect in the case was a Mr. Bear, B-A-E-R. I'm not sure about the date. This says he died in 1859. But what I found online was a trial for a murder that took place of him on December 20th, 1860. So I'm not sure exactly the details on this one. So the Bright family certainly had more than its share of tragedies. William's son Thomas was killed June 12th, 1872 at the age of 20 when he was struck by a bucket filled with gravel that fell down a mine shaft here in San Andreas. Looks like 21 years old. A central hill. Yeah, Central Hill. We know that because right over here, there's a neighboring grave of Robert Ellis. It says he died at Central Hill, June 1876. I've always thought it was kind of interesting how they put specific details about people's deaths on their tombstone. Died at Central Hill. We don't know if this 15 year old had an accident or what happened to him, but at 15 to die on Central Hill, Kind of makes you wonder if he met with an accident or foul play himself. Now earlier I showed you the Winkler store and saw the grave here of Winkler's in the Winkler family plot. There's a Fainan Winkler who died in 
1948. I believe he's the owner of the store that we just visited. You could literally spend hours out here if you knew who you were looking for, some of the stories. Everybody here had a story and they've all been forgotten for the most part, except for the God Shocks that we just visited and some of the people who met some unfortunate, untimely deaths. But uh, everybody here has a story and it would be fascinating if we knew exactly what their stories were. As you will often find in Gold Rush communities, there are graves of people who came from other parts of the states and uh, country and world. Here's a 93 year old who died in 1921. She was from Maine. And her husband, Oliver Wiley. William Fortner, born in Germany, 1833. He died here in California in 1908. He was covered in lichen and moss. Laura Bryan died in 1875. Heaven is her home. Find anything else interesting? Just a bunch of graves. There's the graves. There's a little area down there where it's just babies. Right over there you can see Main Street. So Jabal Alonzo Foster entered into rest 1886. He was born in New York and came overland to California during the gold rush. And he was a saloon keeper. But when he died, he was the county clerk of Calaveras County. And he had also served as the clerk, recorder, and the auditor. Well, just as giants of people drop, so do trees. Nothing lasts forever. Here's a Henry Guttinger. He died in 1917. He was a native of Zurich, Switzerland. And ashes of Albert. Pretty nice slab of granite there for ashes. Here's the 1887 grave of a John Showalter, who was 58, native of Pennsylvania. Never understood why they used backwards letters. The ends are backwards on this one. I'd be really curious to know if any of you like to go through the old cemeteries and just admire some of the old gravestones. Uh, today, it seems like everything's flat on the ground in uniform. Here, it seemed like whatever money could buy is a tombstone that you got. It's always sad to see these little markers here, a wooden marker. Look at that, no evidence whatsoever of who this was for. There's a lot of Sarahs in this cemetery. There's one there. <clears throat> they used clay pipe to outline this grave, but as you can tell, it's not marked anymore and it's broken up. So here lies A.H. Coulter. He was a former county supervisor and I understand he was the next door neighbor of Sheriff B.K. Thorne. One night Coulter was standing near a chicken coop at the rear of Thorne's house and it was at night he lit up a cigar. Thorne had been losing chickens and assumed that Coulter was a thief trying to use a flame to mesmerize the chickens to capture them. So Thorne fired two shots, the second one hitting Coulter in the wrist and breaking his bone. Thorne was mortified at the actions, so were the public who supported him. Erected in memory of Jason or James Oliphant, born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Looks like he died in 1833. No, 1870, he was 37. San Andreas merchant Charles Whitlock died January 27th, 1904. He came to California at the age of 19 through the Isthmus of Panama. For a while, he was in Arizona working for the Butterfield stage. In the 1860s, he came to San Andreas and became postmaster and the Wells Fargo company agent. This is one of the bigger markers and plots here in the cemetery. I think this is kind of sad. This marker has been split in two. It says Ireland up here. It's in memory of Samuel McGowan, who died October 27, 1852. He was 22 years old, one of the earliest graves here. Also Thomas Bassett, who died on October 10, 1852. I'm just wondering if their friends had maybe died of the same illness or something, maybe an accident both natives of County Down, Ireland. There's a John Anderson, died in 1861. There's another miner 
who came out here seeking fortune and ended up dying. August 1857, William Gallagher. Edgar de la Rue, born in Geneva, Switzerland, 1829, died in El Dorado, 1868. Want to go play with the goats? There's goats to play with? Yeah, down there there's goats. Can't you hear them? <laughs> so when you visit cemeteries, does it ever give you pause to think about how short life is? Do I think about how short life is? Yeah. Um, sometimes, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You gotta ask a deep question for it. <laughs> Want to play with goats? <laughs> He's stuck. Are you stuck in there? <coughs> he's stuck. <coughs> yeah, he's stuck. How do we? How do we tell your people? What? How what? do we tell their people? I don't know, but maybe you can holler at them. I don't see the people. Hey, people! Your goat's stuck. Aren't they cute? They're all fluffy. No, when they're stuck. Yeah. How do you get stuck? Put his head in there and now can't go backwards. So I'm standing at the gate of Sheriff Benjamin Kent Thorne's house. He was a legendary lawman here, helped capture Black Bart. This grand old oak tree here probably dates back to Benjamin Thorne's days. You will find this mansion along Highway 49. Just check for the big oak tree and you'll see this brick fence here as well. And you'll see this very cool mansion on the other side of it. This Gothic Revival mansion was built for Sheriff Benjamin Kent Thorne and his wife Annie Meeks in 1861, a year after they got married. The bricks were hauled in from Stockton, 50 miles away, by ox team. Part of the lower sections are constructed of native stone and adobe, and the walls at the base are 30 inches thick. People in town are wondering how Thorne could afford such a mansion. 13 rooms, mind you, on a sheriff's salary and it was suspected he was skimming off some of the tax money that went through his hands. He was so popular, though, that a lot of people didn't care if he was doing a little embezzling on the side. He had brass balls when it came to dealing with the toughest of criminals. He hanged, or assisted in hanging, five murderers on the gallows at San Andreas and McCallamy Hill. It looks like it's in the process of being restored. It's got some neat gingerbread or gothic type of architecture up there on hanging from the eaves. It looks like they've tried to replace it there on the left side of the house. I imagine owning a house like this is very expensive just for the upkeep. He died in 1905 at his daughter's house in the Bay Area. And I understand that he's not buried here as findagrave.com suggests. He's actually buried in Colma, California Cemetery. So we stopped along Highway 49 south of San Andreas. This is the 1935 Calavera Cement Bridge over the highway. It was once part of the railroad system that carried the Southern Pacific Railroad from Valley Springs all the way up here to the hills where there was a cement plant. The Portland cement that came out of the Calaveras factory not only built this bridge, but it also built the Oakland Bay Bridge, Travis Air Force Base, McClellan Air Force Base, San Francisco Airport, Oroville Dam, and lastly, Parrots Ferry Bridge in the late 1970s. I think that's gonna do it for this episode of History Hunters. We hope that you learned a little bit more about the history of San Andreas. I wanna thank you for watching. Give us a like and a comment if you wish. And we'd also love to have you subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much. <music>
San Andreas. What's here? Something Black Bart related. Oh,